Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm going to be playing with the Simon's Snow Globe from Spellbinders. This is one of the new October release products from Spellbinders and they did send this one to me. However, this video is also part of a new hop. I'll give you information about the hop later on in the video and down in the description. First things first though, I'm going to start doing a bunch of die cutting and I forgot I had this one off to the side. So this is, <laughs> this is a snow globe. It is going to be so cool and I've got, I've got an idea. I hope it works. Oh my god, I hope it works. So we're going to go ahead and get started on doing some die cutting and then I can start assembling this, this cute card. Actually, before I get started on the die cutting, I've got so much, I've got an idea in my head and I keep re-changing how I think I'm going to get this to do what I want it to do. What I'm going to do first off, this is going to be for the inside of our snow globe, okay? I am coloring up this panel, I'm just doing some ink blending. Um, kind of to make for the for the sky and I'm starting off with all that jazz and then I'm going to come in with the suede shoes from the top and blend those two together so it's going to be brighter in the middle of the panel and darker up at the top Okay, I'm going to come back in some more all that jazz. Okay, come back in with blue suede, oh rather suede shoes <laughs> one more time. Okay, and then I'm going to let that dry for a little bit because I'm going to do a little heat embossing over the top. So while that is drying, I'm adding some of the All That Jazz to one side of the new, the new embossing folder Christmas tile. This is the embossing folder of the month for September. And I'm going to do a gentle misting. Okay, adding a panel into the front and then just going to fold that right down. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine and it'll be doing an impression of that pretty, uh, pretty ink there. And since it has that little bit of water, it will need a little bit of time to dry as well before I die cut, but isn't that lovely? Next, we're going to work on the base and I'm just cutting that out of some brown cardstock. I want my base to have a little bit more kind of wood grain, so I'm going to do some ink swiping with some walnut stain and a little cube. And that kind of just adds those little... Makes it look a little bit more like wood grain. I also cut out the Merry Christmas sentiment. We've got four different sentiments in here and a sentiment banner. And I cut that out of just some um, gold um, card... Uh, not card paper. This is actually gold paper, foil paper from Michaels. Okay, there we go. So now we have our little Merry Christmas stand all done. So now we're going to create our little scene that's going to be going on here. And this is basically the scene overlay. This is going to be the part that's going to go over our pretty blue. So I'm cutting out a circle, starting off with just that circle die. And next we're going to add our little houses. Now there's a lot of different things that you can do. There's also quite a few add-ons for this set, so you can play with a bunch of those things. For this one, I just want to have 
this cute little scene with these little houses and I think I'm actually going to use the slate as well that'll cut out of black cardstock in a bit but to start off with let's just add this down and it's going to cut out that little border now it's also going to cut out both pieces so you can also use this for something else later but I'm just going to be using the bottom section here so now we have our cute little houses for this next bit I'm going to be using the Simon Hurley stippled stamp and that means I'm making some snow and I'm going to be using wild clear embossing powder um, wild clear embossing ink and recollections um, white yes why this one is snow that's good snow white embossing powder so this is not yeah it is not some wow embossing powder while embossing powder you don't actually have to use an embossing tool uh, I mean embossing powder because it doesn't stick where you don't want it it stays it's anti-static as long as you keep it in a jar this is a not that type so I am covering my panel with some powder so next I'm going to just add uh, some ink across this bottom half of the panel and I am going back and forth over it a few times because I can't really tell how much I've got on there this is just going to add a bunch of little dots so even if some of them are missed that is still okay and then I'm going to add this to about the top half of my panel here now let's go ahead and add some of our powder and then you can really see where all those little dots are and it does look like I got some shiftage I did shift the pan a little bit so you can see some of them are kind of moving a little bit that's actually kind of cool because it kind of looks like a little bit of a snowstorm or a little bit of wind blowing around the snow flurries Next, we're going to heat this up with my heat gun. So next, I am going to make a window in the front of this panel. Now, this is the embossed panel. It would have worked better if I did the circle first yeah instead it's going to squish some of that embossing out that's okay since we've got the ink we're still going to be able to see it so i trimmed down that embossed panel and a piece of acetate to a little bit about an eighth of an inch smaller than a2 size and i'm going to add my acetate to the back of this panel so it's going to basically cover this entire piece um, with the plastic Okay, and then we'll go from there with a couple of other steps to do for our shaker. Okay, so now we have our window. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue, not that piece, <laughs> that is basically a mask now, but I'm going to glue this piece in right there at the bottom now that I have everything where I want it and I'm going to actually adhere it down to the plastic so yeah I'm instead of using glue I am going to use some a double sided tape so it holds it down nice and nice and sturdy to the plastic plastic is a little tricky sometimes to glue things to glue just doesn't really stick and you normally need to use some kind of strong double sided tape okay so we're going to do that one too and there we go now we have our little scene so just so you have an idea of what it's going to look like isn't that pretty i mean this would be pretty just by itself but wait there's more we're going to be adding some foam to the back so we have our cute little shaker window so now I'm adding some foam to the back of my panel here i'm not going to make this um, the shaker part um, be too thick so i'm just using my regular thickness foam tape for this and I'm also going to be um, 
I think I'm going to use some glitter. I never use glitter. I don't. I really don't. Um, I'm going to trim this so I can get it as close as I can to the edge there. See that? But I'm also going to, like I did on this one already, I'm taking the release paper off both sides. And the reason for that is it makes it a lot easier to turn it. Okay, so we want it to curve around. So I'm putting it right up to the edge there. We want it to curve around our window. And then up here at the top, it would overlap. I don't want it to overlap, so I have to be careful to cut it as close as I can to where they're actually going to join. And that looks like, I'm going to show you this because I never get it that close. You can see it's a little bit overlapped. That is okay because since it's foam, you can squish it down in there. And now we've got, basically we've got a circle that nothing is going to sneak out of. First, I'm going to prep this. I'm trying to remember all of the things that I think about after I make a shaker and it doesn't work the way I want. I want this to be as static free as I can because otherwise the, the shaker stuff is going to stick to the panel. So I've got myself out a old, 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 old cheapo um, dryer sheet. I'm just going to rub around on the inside of my acetate. This is going to help limit the amount of static that is in there because it's you know these that's what these are used for is for static now i'm going to put my shaker bits in okay also going to add in some diamond dust now this is i've had this for a while i don't use it that much because after i bought it and i tried using it i realized this is tiny tiny shards of glass because it is tiny shards of glass, you can cut yourself a little bit or at least feel like you're getting a little bit cut. So I'm just going to add some of this into my shaker window. Okay, let's take a look and see how our little shaker card is coming out. Everything is moving just like I want it. And there's enough of a well down there that it kind of just gathers all of our little bits right behind the houses. So that I think is just super cute. I'm gonna do something else. And the reason I didn't mention it at the beginning of the video is that I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to actually create the combination that I'm wanting to make. And it looks like this is gonna work. So here is, here's my cute little shaker. And now I've got a one light from Pear Blossom Press. And I wanted to make sure that this was going to work okay. So if I place it over the top, this is how you would test it. You can still see that light. So that is what I'm gonna do next. So I think I want the light to be about here, right in the center, and then having the, uh, the button off to the side so that I can add a little piece here for the wording. And so I'm gonna be real careful to hold this in place and grab my pencil so I can mark on the back where I want this to go. I do already have some double stick tape on there. Before I do that, let me test it. I have to test, because what happens with me? I test something and turns out, uh, if I put it down first, I'm gonna have it in the wrong spot. So I've got my little guide marks there. Let's go ahead and just tape that down and shift it back to where it's supposed to be. There we go. And then turn it over again and just make sure. And the light is still in the right spot. Fabulous. Okay, so now, because I know it's in the right spot, I can take off the release paper from my double stick tape and tape that right in place. Okay, so this is where I've got my button. There we go, so it's like right at the edge of that 
snowy hill. Okay. So, got that on there. Now this is the best, the, I'm sorry, the world's best foam tape from Pear Blossom Press. This is double, double thick foam tape, so it is the right thickness for our little mechanism there. You see, it, you need it to be thick enough for that. Um, another wonderful thing about this tape, and yes, I do absolutely love this stuff, is that it is repositionable for about a half hour, and then it's permanent overnight. So I'm going to basically just pop up this whole panel. Okay, before putting on the base of my um, of my snow globe, I want to make sure I get my press me button on here so it's seen. So just testing it again. Yeah, I'm testing because I love the lights. Anyway, this is where I need to put my button. So we're just going to... Put that in in this um, real pretty blue. It's again that all that jazz, so it's not too overpowering. I'm gonna go glue this down flat. Depending on what you're doing and how you're doing your card, you could always layer things up. I've got plenty of foam and dimension on this because of using that, um, because I'm doing a shaker and doing the light up, so doing those Basically, it's triple layer of foam. This is one that if you're going to mail it, you probably want to put it into a bubble mailer. Or you can hand deliver it. And just get it pretty straight. There we go. So I just checked something else. And it's another reason why I'm so glad that this tape is repositionable. Because I put it over a card base. Because this is what it's going to do, right? And I tested the light again. And look at how that looks. That is not what I want. That is something that you could do that's kind of cool if you're wanting to have the light come to a specific point, but that's not what I want. I want the whole globe to glow. And the reason that that did it is because I've got this. It is blocking some of the light. So because this foam tape is repositionable, I can just peel it right off, use it for later. Let's put this back on now and see how it does. So now it glows like I want. It doesn't have that harsh line going across it. Okay, so I cut out a bunch of the little trees and our little Santa and reindeer. And I'm adding a little tiny, tiny bit of double-sided tape to the back of my trees where they're going to touch the, the plastic. And I'm going to trim off a little bit of this because I don't want it to be overlapping. There we go. That's going to be perfect. I don't want it to be overlapping and looking like it's outside of the snow globe like this one does. So I'm going to add this right up near the top. Actually, this one is only going to be on the, on the plastic. So I'll go ahead and add that down. Take off the release paper and put them in place. A lot of these I'm going to also be using glue because it's going to be touching paper. So let's go ahead and add this one in, just slide it on down and press it in place. So now that tree is kind of in the background and still looks cute with the lights. I love the lights. Okay, this one is also in the back. So it's got gonna have a little bit of that double-sided tape on there.
Okay, so for Santa, because it's going to be completely on the plastic, I need to cut a lot of little pieces to go behind each of the deer and behind the sled. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add this right across the top on the plastic and try to keep it inside of our, yes, there we go. So it's inside of the snow globe. Fabulous. Let's take a look. Oh, next, all, all I've got left to do is just put it onto a card base. So that's going to finish up this card project, creating a super fun shaker and light up, <laughs> yeah, light up shaker snow globe using the Simon Hurley snow, Go snow globe collection from Spellbinders. Um, I also want to remind you that this video is part of a collaboration hop. This is with LV Handcrafted and it is called the Spellbinders Casual Collaboration. So we will be um, doing these actually a couple of times a month, I think. I'm going to try to be involved in as many as I can because she is just so super sweet. And this is not officially run by Spellbinders or anything. This is just where some of the Spellbinders creators are getting together to share some of their fun projects with you guys. So be sure to follow the rest of the hop and see all the fun things that folks are making. You guys have a wonderful day. Let me turn off the lights. <laughs> this looks even better in the dark. So you guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.